Welcome back to Arise Primetime, where we offer perspectives on the news and talking points of the day. I'm Constance Ikoku. In Nigeria, it is time to put a halt to unending cases of building collapses that have led to unnecessary loss of lives. Recently, a school building collapsed in the Busibuji community in just north central area of Plato State, killing at least 22 people and injuring over 132 others. Most of the victims and survivors were young school children. There are many more incidents. Meanwhile, in order to solve the issue of housing shortage, President Bola Tinimbu a few months ago approved 126.5 billion naira for the delivery of a total of 100,000 houses nationwide in 18 months. This was flagged off under the Renewed Hope Housing Initiative. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by Akintola Oladejo. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Prestigious Homes Limited. Welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's uh, start with building collapses. Yeah. The last major incident we had was just where you had school children went to school and they were buried under the rubbles. This has happened or continues to happen frequently. What is the main problem here and how can we solve it? I mean, unfortunately, like you said, you know, we, we've been seeing this trend over the last few years, both in uh, Lagos, Abuja, and uh, as you just mentioned, more recently in Plateau State. You know, I would say uh, a lot of contributory factors, you know, factors contributing to this incident. Uh, the chief was, of which would be substandard materials, you know, um, lack of engaging professionals in the construction process, not following standards and processes that have been laid down to be able to ensure quality product. You know, so this among other things are uh, what is responsible for the building collapse. You know, I mean Nigeria we do have competent hands when developers do not engage professionals to do this work and do not you know follow all the all the engineering processes as stipulated, you know, to ensure uh, quality product, this is what you have. And also uh, I mean failure in in adequate monitoring mm -hmm. also by Regulation, bodies, regulation, regulatory yes. bodies that are meant to ensure that the right things are being done in some of these states. So, I mean, it's something that we need to all hands need to be on deck to really address and to put it all to all of these uh, all of these incidents because as you see it causes fatality and this is not how we should go really as a nation. There's also housing shortages. So, President Bola Tinubu approved one twenty six point five billion. Uh, Naira for the construction of some 100,000 homes in 18 months. That was about six months ago. Yeah. Is this enough? Is it just a drop in the ocean? We have more than 28 million shortage of housing in Nigeria. Absolutely. You see, the, if you look at the figures, right, Nigeria is about 201 million people. Mm. In 2050, we expected, it's expected that Nigeria will be the third most populous nation on the planet. That means there's going to be in ever increase on year on year basis for. Uh, increased demand for housing. People have to live somewhere. You know, apart from food, of course, there's share that you have where to put, to put your head. So, a hundred thousand cannot be enough. It's a good start. It you know is a great effort by the president, and I you know I think if they sustain this on your own basis, it's going to help ameliorate uh, the suffering of the masses and also you know bridge the gap in affordable housing and social housing provision for the people that need it. But it is certainly not enough, but I think the government also is aware, and that is why it has come up with this Renew Hope Estate you know, Initiative. In, and this is what is going to continue, on, I mean, as we go through the, um, the remaining years term of the administration. So the funding for this project is expected to come from a couple of agencies, Federal Ministry of Housing and Urban Development Budgetary Allocation, the Federal Mortgage Bank, Bank of Nigeria, and some uh, private uh, uh, people or businesses. Um, as an expert, how would you rate this government institution vis-a-vis -vis their, their counterparts across the world, their performance? Uh, if, if you look, you know, just like I said, the, 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 there's increase, recently there have been a surge in growth. You know, there's been growth and development in the real estate sector. And I'll give you some numbers. You know, the, in Nigeria in 20, 2004, it is anticipated that the market volume, the real estate market value, is going to achieve about two, two point, you know, two point four two trillion dollars. You know, in this, I mean, there are several segments that make up the real estate sector. So you have the different asset class. You have the residential. You have the commercial. You have the industrial. The residential, which is really what we're talking about, 
is you know really constitute about 2.08 you know of these 2.42 trillion dollars and if you want to compare that globally in the US and in the US is about 132 trillion dollars in 2024 alone then if you look at Nigeria over the next four, five years 2024 to 2029 it is expected that we're going to achieve a compound annual growth rate of 7.1%. So in 2029, we're expecting we're expected to have to have grown to about $3.4 trillion. Now the point is compare $2.42 trillion to the US $132 trillion. It is well less about well less than 2%. You know, so the growth, the potential is enormous. You know, our surging population, the urbanization, the demography, the youth moving from the rural areas to the urban areas, the, 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 the growth in the middle class, you know, it, all this is, is responsible for the demand, the surge in housing. Right. Now, you have the NHF fund, you have the family home fund, you need to contribute for the NHF, you contribute like 2.5% of your, of your monthly salary to be able to access uh, a loan of about 15 million at a very reasonable interest rate of 6% versus over 20% for the you know, commercial, truly commercial banks. So I think all of this effort, if sustained, really can help. Mm. You know, if sustained, it can help. You so know. what's the point though when most of these houses are not accessible or affordable? Affordable to Nigerians. You look, like a, uh, look at a city like Abuja. Mm. Within houses are so expensive. Then, if the population, yes, there's a, a movement into the urban centers. If people cannot afford to, you know, rent homes, you know, decent homes, then what is government there for? You, you know, and really, for me, I mean, coming from the private private, private, private sector, sector yes. you know, I would say um, houses are going to be expensive. Houses are not going to be affordable. If you look at the current trend of inflation, the mm. cost of construction, these are the things pushing the prices. You know, I'm going to sell the way I buy. You know, so if you look from January to now, um, I'll give you an example. In January, for instance, um, cost of um, iron reinforcement is about 500,000 per ton. Mm. Today, it is 1.4 million per ton. So what would have cost you to build three houses is what it's costing you to build one today. Now, as a private developer, what do you do? You, know, you cannot sell below what you bought. So there must be, there will be increase, there will be increase in the price of houses. So it's market forces that's actually determining, you know, these prices. And that is where government come in. So it is difficult in Nigeria for private sector to be involved in social housing, you know, and that's why you will see that a lot of the developers, you know, do not really focus on prov provision of social housing or what you call affordable housing. You know, I mean, look at the cost of land. I mean, if you look at Lagos, for instance, for me as a developer, I was going to develop on the island. The cost of land already yes. has more than triple what the category you will call social housing, mm -hmm. you know. So it is still the government, I mean, if you look at um, the focus of government, or one of the key aim of government is to ensure that shelter has been provided, you know, for the majority of the people, if not for all. And, you know, and I think that the government needs to do more, you need to pro uh, provision infrastructure. The, the private developer needs to be incentivized, mm. you know, to be able to even get into providing, in, into reducing cost. For instance, if I, if, I don't to if I don't need to worry about infrastructure, if I don't need to worry about producing, about doing road, if I don't need to worry about providing water, if I don't need to worry about providing capital for, for electricity, my cost is going to go down and that's going okay. to transfer to the end users. Okay, so when you look at Africa, talking about the materials and all of yes. that and all the importation we have to do in order to build, when you look at Africa, Nigeria for instance, it, it could be anywhere, Abuja could be anywhere in the world Absolutely. in terms of the kind of housing we build. Absolutely. And so why are there no distinguishing features to show that this is Africa, maybe some traditional characteristics, things that are unique to us? Why are we not focused on Afrocentric architecture or design or urban planning? Do you get what I mean? Yeah, I okay. understand. I mean, we can do more, but I'll be honest with you, our architecture is even an envy of many African nations. I've so, been to a few so, African so countries. Really? Yes, you yeah, see people but say, there's nothing that says this is this is Africa. It just it shows it can be Europe, it can be America. If you go to Asia, you go to those places, you will know this is India, this is Malaysia. There are features, traditional features and characteristics that are that are there. Uh, I, I believe we're not, you know, we're, we're not looking. We're not trying to see hot. No, you know, no, we're, we're not talking we're about us no, as African. Why does your mind go to heart? <laughs> no, what I'm saying, you know, so the narrative, you know, yes. so when you say, when people, if I was in America yeah. and I was, um, you know, an American, I'm going to see what they typically would typify, typify as African housing. No, it you know, doesn't you have see. to be a heart. So, but the truth of the matter is, our architecture is dynamic, you know, across this nation, 
if you look at the Nollywood, a lot when I go, I, I visited, I was in Congo, I was in Zimbabwe, I was, a lot of people say, oh, the Nigeria, those big, big homes, you know, they kind of see us and say, we have big, big homes. Our architecture is actually dynamic. If you look at most of our buildings, most, our, most of the buildings you see here are not really what you see in the U.S. or what you see in other parts of the world. That is the truth of the matter. Look at it more closely. Now, like I say we can do more, and I understand where you're coming from. We can begin to uh, show our culture, the diverse culture, the over 500 languages we have in Nigeria. Let it begin to reflect in the kind of development our designs. You know, yes, there's room for growth, but I'll tell you, we're not doing badly. We're not when we go to, then you must look at the market. You see, you follow the market, you follow the, the look at everything even in the society. What is our taste? Are we Eurocentric? Are we Afrocentric? So all of this, so real estate itself is like a fashion business. You know, you follow trend. And for you as investors, you want to build what people are buying. So we're constantly asking ourselves, even for us as a company, when we're deciding what to build, we're saying, what are people buying? You have to follow the market trend, unfortunately. Okay. You know. <laughs> Last question. What inspired you to pursue a career in building homes? I'll tell you, real estate is in my blood. You know, real estate is in my blood, construction is in my blood. I grew up in Abuja. My dad was into construction as a farm work guy. I saw the city develop from the scratch. And, you know, I had to go to site. After school, I had to go to site. You know, and I'm, I'm amazed by the number of people. On a single building, you could have over three, four, five hundred people, you know, work. So, construction is a high employer of, of labor. When I see the work I do, and I see the thousands of people, you know, that actually work within our production cycle, and then there are other families that depend on them. So it's a thing that actually inspires me. It's something that you know, makes me happy. And another thing you must know is that construction, um, uh, construction, apart from being a high employer of labor, also helps kids crime. You know, mm. you can't go to site in the afternoon and get tired and then carry gun in the night. Yes. You know, so anywhere you see a, he a high construction activity, there's a very low crime rate. You okay. know, and, okay. uh, and also, uh, I mean, providing housing for people, which is a business entity, is a thing of pride. And Mr. I enjoy it. Mr. Kintola Oladejo, thank, thank you. you so much for coming tonight. Thanks for having me. Well, that's it for this edition of Arise Primetime. Do join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja, goodbye and thank you for watching. Thank you.